Hi there. So I've been posting a lot of articles on the Tangents blog about how I set up headshots in the studio. But the question has come up, how would you do it in a smaller home-based studio? In your living room or in the basement? So I'm here at my friend's apartment and I'm going to set up a basic white backdrop. And then for lighting, I'm going to use a speed light. I'm going to go with a Canon system. And we're going to try out a shoot-through umbrella, black umbrella, a bounce umbrella. For the background, let's see how the magmod bounce thing works, the dome, just to spread the light in the background. And we're going to go with, let me untangle myself, Canon 6D, probably with a 24 to 70 working with 70 millimeter lens, but also brought a longer lens, so we'll see how that works out. I brought long white roll of paper, we're going to set it up for the background and then see the results we get in a very simple two-speed light setup. So easiest would be to have two light stands for the backdrop. That makes life easier. I suppose you could use a white wall, that works. But if you want to change the color, you want, you want a colored background or a gray background, anything like that, it's just easier working with a paper roll. To set up the white paper backdrop, we need a crossbar. And Manfrotto makes a really neat one, which extends for as long as you need it. And I'm going to set it for just longer than the roll, obviously. About there. Okay, we do want to tighten both ends of the crossbar because we're going to lift it up. So I've rolled down a fair amount of the paper backdrop so that the bottom part will be the weight that will hold the paper fairly straight. And then very useful for the studio always Y clamps, in this case just to hold the paper backdrop to the crossbar. And now I'm going to hoist it up. So for my light stands, I really prefer these Manfrotto light stands because they stack together. So you can have two, three, four, maybe even five of them together. Very easy to carry and they can even stand on the floor. Um, very compact. So and we're going to have one for the background light and one for the main light. So the slot here for the umbrella is at an angle. So I have to make sure that the umbrella isn't angled down, but is angled more up. So the beam of the flash and the angle of the umbrella converge. So for the start, I'm going to use a shoot-through umbrella, a translucent umbrella. So I'll be using this behind our subject to blow out the white, so I can control how bright the background is. If I switch it off, the background will probably go to a light gray, because white is not necessarily white, depends on how much light you give it. This light, there's light fall off, remember, inverse square law. So even if I light up my subject here, my background's going to go darker, darker, darker. So I need this light on my background to turn it into white. So my background light, I've set it up as the B flash. The main light, obviously, for simplicity, I'll keep as A. So for full light, the opposite side of the main light is, on the light stand, a sun bounce. I really like this. It folds up very compact, very neat and it's very easy to handle, but in this case, we're going to hang it from a clamp. So in a studio setup, even a home studio setup, you shoot in manual flash. This really is not the time to shoot TTL, simply because your subject is in a static position compared to your lighting. So keep everything in manual. So using the Canon transmitter, I'm going to set up the A-light manual to some level. We'll figure out how. And the B flash in the background at a certain level. I'm going to start with a background flash first to make sure that whatever my chosen aperture is, I'm getting it to the edge of the histogram. I'm going to take a test shot of the background to make sure that it's white. In other words, push to the edge of the histogram. So not my subject yet, just simply blowing out the background.
And there we have it. The histogram goes right to the edge. So for my chosen aperture, 5.6, my flash at a quarter power, I'm blowing it out right on the edge, so my white is white. I can take it even a little higher if I want by bumping up the power, but 5.6, decent enough aperture for headshots. I'm getting enough juice. If I want f8, I can always take the background light to half power and still get it blown out. So at this point, let me introduce our subject, Matt Locker, a friend of mine who's also an actor and a voiceover artist, and we're doing headshots of him right here. So for metering, you can have a handheld meter. That's also cool. In fact, you should have a handheld meter. What I'm going to use here, I'm going to use a bit of a cheat again, the histogram. He's got a white shirt. I'm going to take the metering reading off that and place it on the edge of the histogram. Skin tones and everything else should be perfect right then. If we didn't have a white shirt, we'd hold up a white pepper napkin or something. Just not something quite as professional and slick as a handheld meter, but hey, it works. And then also important is we can do a color checker test chart. Just an easy reference for our colors. Do this for every shoot in the studio and every shoot that's controlled, simply so we have a specific reference point every time. So for start, I'm going to use not the 24 to 70, the 70 is a little bit too short. I'm getting too much of the background in, I want something a little tighter. If you find the 70 to 200 lens too bulky and too heavy to use, a really good portrait lens and also very versatile in that it is. A macro lens is, guess what, the 100 mm macro lens. So I'm setting up my main light. I want to find out the exposure. So I know that with a shooter umbrella, there's a lot of light loss, even with a bit of light being bounced off the walls, but there's a lot of light loss. So I know that at this distance, I should probably be at full power or maybe half power, we'll see. So that's how I know where it should be uh, for the start. It's not just a random guess, it's from experience. You should be used to your speed light with a certain light modifier, whether it's a softbox, shooter umbrella, brown umbrella, whatever it might be. You should become familiar over time with what your settings should be approximately for a certain distance and a certain aperture at a certain ISO. That's how it works. Remember, flash exposure, PAID, power aperture ISO distance. It's fixed. We juggle those settings to get to great exposure. So I'm going to do my first test shot of Matt's white shirt at full power. Let's see what that does. So it looks like I'm right on the edge, there's a bit of a spike and I'm getting blinking highlights. So full power is just too much. So I'm gonna take it a third of a stop down or maybe two thirds of a stop down until the histogram is perfect. So now we see the spike there is just short of the edge and no blinking highlights on the white shirt. We're getting a blinking highlight in the background and that's the spike. We wanna blow out a little bit. We can keep it on the edge or blow out a little bit. I did move it uh, closer from earlier on so it's now just tipping over the edge of the histogram. That's good, gives us a clean white background. So now that I've set up the exposure for the main light, we have the reflector there, giving a bit of full light from the side and we have the light in the background, it's blowing out a little bit. Now that we've set up everything, let's start. A really good way to get consistency from shoot to shoot, especially if you use different types of light sources, is a color checker chart. It gives you a neutral reference point. So rotate a little bit with me this way, there we go. And you're pulling back a little bit, lean a little bit forward, pop your hand in your pocket. There you go, That's I like the attitude. Ah, stay with that. Here are the results, looks clean. We're getting the blinking highlight, the white spot behind us. Let's get rid of that. In my menu, I've set the highlight alert so I can very quickly access it. Disable it, and let's go back to the image. There you go, clean white look. Looks very neat. Lighting is fairly flat, works. That, that what you just did there, we kind of turned to the side. Mm -hmm. Rotate the other way around. Step a little bit back, and I kind of just look forward and slightly to the camera. Uh, okay, half a shuffle forward, because I can see the background light. Kind of look down towards there. Uh, not the camera, just look down. Got kind of a James Bond look going there. Hold that, lift your chin slightly. 
I really like the results we get so far with the shoot-through umbrella. But let's change up to the reflective umbrella, the one with the black backing, and see how that results differ. Again, just making sure that the stem of the umbrella and the angle of the flash kind of converge to the center. I have my flash set up to 24 millimeters, which is a fair enough, wide enough spread. The umbrella here is, I'm gonna guess it's a 42 inch umbrella, somewhere there. It's one of those commonly available. Now that we've changed the bounce umbrella, the one with the black backing, I have to make sure that we get to the same exposure. I moved it forward a little bit, just for comparison, so that the light source is more or less in the same plane. So this is about the same distance as we had with the shoot-through umbrella. So let's do a test shot of the white, see where we are with our exposure. Histogram looks good. The white shirt is on the edge, the background is still blowing out a little bit, no blinking highlights on the shirt. We are there for the same exposure. Stitch in slightly and relax your eyes. Lift the chin again slightly, too much, and give that smile again. So the results look really good. Very straightforward, not complicated, but it looks, I would say, let's go for elegantly simple. Very easy to achieve. Two speed lights, two light modifiers, white pepper backdrop. You can even use a white wall. It's well within your reach.